Hello and welcome to this week's video which is all around the ACA certificate level exams and giving you some successful study tips. So hopefully these will help you breeze through these first six exams. Of course with a bit of hard work, well probably a fair bit of hard work, but these tips are something that really did work for me because prior to starting the ACA I actually did a year of teaching and so I hadn't really done exams for a while and it was definitely overwhelmed and daunting starting again but these tips should really definitely help you if you are soon to start the ACA qualification. So to give you a quick outline of the ACA certificate level exams, there are six exams. So the first six of the full 15 ACA exams are of that certificate level. You can sit them in any order and it doesn't have to be your first six, but it was for me. So I sat it all in the order of the structure of the ACA. So certificate, professional and then advanced. So in this video, I'm not going to go into the details of all six exams. If that's something you're looking for, then do check this video out and you'll find that there. So just to kind of summarise the overall outline, there's six exams that are an hour and a half long and they are predominantly multiple choice exams, but some have a scenario based element to them. So just because they are predominantly multiple choice, this by no means means that it is easy. And so I have actually got a video which shares my difficulty ranking of all the ACA exams. And you'll find that actually, surprisingly, the certificate aren't those exams that I did find to be the easiest. And it is actually a mix between all 15 exams. So do check that out. It's this video here and you can also find the pass rates and that'll kind of give you an indication of how many people do pass those certificate level exams. And so just for some context, the actual pass mark is 55%. But again, that does not mean it's easy, but it also doesn't mean the converse side where people think it might actually be quite impossible to pass. So do really do check out that difficulty video to give you more of an idea of what to expect. So now moving on then and actually getting into the certificate level exams. Well, the first thing I will say is just do not stress. So me, I also, well, I say also, I'm not sure about you, but I had no prior accounting experience. And so I really didn't know what to expect. So at uni, I studied economics and maths. And honestly, I literally did avoid the accounting modules because I was told they were too hard. So yeah, it's weird how life works, but here I am, ACA qualified. But yeah, essentially, just don't worry. You will learn everything you need to during the ACA qualification and during your actual job. So again, do not stress. So I personally don't think not having an accounting background hindered my progress at all, to be honest. And also something that I will say is that a common myth is that you need to be good at maths to do well in accounting. And honestly, I really don't think that's true because the actual maths that's in there is quite limited to a more basic kind of GCSE level, so really don't worry. Learning accounting, honestly, for the first time, it is like learning a new language. But what I do actually enjoy about accounting, and I honestly do enjoy accounting, is that it's actually all quite logical and it does kind of fit into place and make sense. But if you do want to get ahead before starting that ACA qualification, because you do want to get straight in, then I actually do have a book. So it's this accounting for beginners book and it is available on amazon so the link is in the description below but you can actually read it for free so you can get the ebook so again check out the link in the description below and i do also have a video on this from last week and you'll be able to find just a lot more information out about the book so the content does actually overlap with the aca certificate level accounting exam so it doesn't teach you everything you need to know but there is some overlap and it really will just teach you the basics of accounting in a really simplified manner with lots of examples and you really will get some high level insights and what more there is to come so it's actually honestly just great if I do so so myself but if you did perhaps study modules in uni that you think you could get exemptions for in the ACA qualification then it definitely is worth checking out whether you do have that credit for prior learning so the link is in the description below and you can put your course in and essentially find out what exams you do get exemptions from so for me, I didn't have any exemptions. And in a way, I was kind of glad because I could just learn everything from scratch. It was kind of fresh in my brain. And some of those exams are prerequisites for the next exam. So it did kind of just flow quite nicely for me. I mean, if you do get exemptions though, it probably is worth taking it. It will take a lot of the stress away and you will just then recap what you already learned previously. 
It is worth checking though whether your employer actually will allow those exemptions because I believe for mine they made everyone do accounting regardless so that's certificate level accounting and I think maybe assurance was one that everybody had to do as well but especially for things like law where it only comes up in that one exam that is honestly worth getting the exemption for if you can. So right let's assume now you've started the ACA certificate level and you want to learn the content. How actually is the best way then to learn the content? So for me, I studied with Kaplan and I think BPP is also similar. So these are tuition providers and they do have their own integrated workbooks. So if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's essentially just a folder and it has a summary of all the notes. So it's a condensed version of that ICAW study manual and it essentially teaches you everything that you need to know for the exams. So touching on the ICAW study manual, I do think that they are honestly just so thick and content heavy and it's quite difficult actually to just learn from that study manual alone there's so much information in there and you might just get a bit overwhelmed and not know where to actually focus your attention that's where these integrated workbooks are actually really useful so if you don't have access to any integrated workbooks because you're not studying with Kaplan or BPP well, I don't really think it's something to worry about at this certificate level stage. With plenty of question practice, that's where you'll really start to gauge what those important topics are and what you need to know to pass. There's also said to be an online study guide as well, so I'll put a link in the description below to that if you'd like it. So in terms of covering the content, I would recommend going through the integrated workbook at least once or going through the notes for the whole syllabus just once. So for accounting, it might be worth having to go back to your notes afterwards once you start to go through the questions and realise some topics are actually more tricky than you initially thought and just need a bit more of your attention. This might be the case as well for other exams such as management information or tax compliance, but touching on tax compliance actually you are given some help sheets in the exam so it kind of covers some of those admin dates and things like that and those tax bans so it's really really crucial before starting the actual exam and revising that you are familiar with what's provided to you in the exam so you don't kind of waste time trying to memorise things that you actually don't need to. Some of the other certificate level exams then, such as assurance and law, I really don't think you should spend too much time focusing on the content. And to be honest, I think that's something that's maybe a bit weird to hear because previously in exams, GCSEs, A-levels, uni, I felt like I would always write content out, have some nice bullet points and really just go through and make sure that I actually understand it first. But I think with this, a lot of the learning comes through question practice. I do think you should go through the content at least once, you know, just highlighting through and understanding. Don't really try and reproduce notes or just make your own because I think for these certificate level exams, you do just need to get into it. And to be honest, this is because the questions are actually kind of nitpicky. And in my experience, I found that I was able to learn quite a lot through the question practice. And that's where I was able to pick up the smaller details in the knowledge. And I guess you just learn from your mistakes in that question practice. And that's just more effective personally than just going through the content. So now let's talk about then that question practice that I'm talking about. So ICAEW, they will provide you with a question bank. So that is a big, thick bank of questions. Some are just potential questions that could come up, but others are actually questions from previous exam papers. So it is actually really, really useful. And I think the question bank is actually a fair representation of the exams that you will have. So I do think for the certificate level, you should aim to go through the question bank at least once. So this should be enough as long as you're really debriefing and learning from your answers. You don't just want to get something wrong and then ignore it and just never come back to it because you need to learn from it. So with assurance actually, and I think potentially law, I did even go through the question bank twice and that's just because they are much shorter questions and they're either right or wrong. I personally do think that I did revise quite a lot and that's just because I really did not want to have to fail and have any resits. I would literally as well just pull out the question bank wherever I was. If I was on the train at the train station, I would just be going through that question bank. And to be honest, it probably was a bit excessive and you don't need to go that overboard. But I think you just need to kind of figure out how much is enough for you. 
how much question practice gets you confident for those exams. So I honestly just really can't stress enough how important that question mark practice is. As soon as you've gone through the content and you're okay with it and kind of get it, just go straight to the question mark for the certificate level exams. You honestly just won't regret going in earlier than later. So as I've said, the question bank is pretty similar to the real exam. I think the only one of the certificate level exams I found that it was maybe harder for was management information. But I do actually think I just hadn't really grasped and understood enough how to answer questions that were just slightly different where they just rearrange formulas and things like that. I think that's the one where you do really also need a very good understanding of the content because the questions can be slightly tougher. And something to note as well is that I didn't ever really go through the study manual self-test questions. So I did have the Kaplan test your understanding questions within that integrated workbook. And I also had the ICAEW question bag. And I thought those two combined were more than enough. But how much study time is actually required to pass the ACA certificate level exams? So I'll start off by talking about how quickly I sat the exams and learnt the content and then sat the exams. So for me, I did the first six within the first three months of my graduate scheme. So it was very intense, to be honest. In the first month, I had done accounting, assurance and tax. So I think it was probably about literally a month from learning the content to then sitting those exams. You can see my timetable here of what my exam dates actually were. But thankfully as well, I did not require any resits and I did fortunately pass all first time. But that is because, like I said, I put in a lot of hard work. So in terms of revision, I know I said I was revising on the train and just kind of all over. But I think in the weekdays, it was probably a few hours a night and then some weekends as well, especially those closer to the exams, I'd definitely be revising on those weekends. And I'll share my timetable of the first exam that I sat and how much practice I did actually do then. So you can see that here. But then the other three exams, I think I had one whole month then for management information. And then the following month, I had the last two. And I did actually have some personalised learning days to go through these, so not everything was taught to me at Kaplan College. I did have to actually self-teach some. So on top of these personalised learning days, I'd probably do an hour or so in the evening and then some weekends as well. So in terms of how much time is actually required and to answer the question, it really does just depend on your schedule. It's so hard for me to say this is how much time you need. It just really depends on you and your schedule. So something that I've touched on so many times now in these videos is having a weekly planner. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have a weekly planner so you can just plan out your time, plan out your question practice and just put all your commitments on there so you know exactly what time you have to work with. So I have put a link in the description below to an example weekly planner that you can purchase from Amazon and it really is just so beneficial. So the weekly planner that I've shared with you, that is the one that literally carried me through my studies and I used it from certificate all the way to advanced level. And I really would just honestly stick to this and just tweak as and where for certain questions but it would just make me know exactly what questions I needed to do. And that would allow me to practice and get through enough of the question bank that I needed to, to feel comfortable to pass. So if you do have the time, like I said, for some, you could literally go through the question bank twice. Again, it is a bit excessive and it's not necessary. Some people actually don't even get to go through the question bank once, so just don't worry too much, but you do just need to try and get as much practice as you really can. And this honestly will help you a lot with business technology and finance because a lot of that content is retaught. And that whole content is actually the content that forms one of the professional level exams of business strategy and technology. And so making posters and things like that now for business technology finance will actually be really beneficial for later on. So if you do feel like you still need some extra resources or just want that extra bit of help for the certificate level exams, I'll provide you some resources that I haven't actually touched on already. So the first is ICAEW sample assessments. So for a lot of the certificate level exams, if you go on the ICAEW website, there will be some sample assessments. So that is essentially a mock exam there for you to try. So I put a link in the description below so you can access those. And there's actually a lot of other useful resources on each of those exam pages. So it is worth checking out. And what's also really helpful about these sample exams is that it's actually in the exam software. So this software will look very new to you at the start and you just won't really know what to expect. So the sample assessment does give you that insight and you'll be able to have then no surprises on the real day 
when it pops up and you just know what to expect. So the second resource that I can share with you is ACA Telegram groups. So I have set up Telegram groups for each of the different levels, so Certificate Professional Advanced and just an overall ACA one. Telegram is essentially WhatsApp without phone numbers and these groups now I've had for quite a while and so they have actually got almost 100 people in the certificate level group and then there's more in the others as well. And what these groups are for are just sharing knowledge, just sharing questions. It's essentially just a support group and so that is there for you. So it's current certificate level students as well as those who have passed and can share some guidance as well. And then to recap some resources that I have already covered, do make sure to check out this video which breaks down all of the certificate level. And then there's also this fabulous book which you can get ahead in accounting and I'm not biased. Check out the reviews as well before having a look at that. And then finally, have a look at the pass rates in this video and you'll be able to gauge exactly how hard it may be. Something as well that might be of interest to you once you're starting the certificate level is actually finding more out about the ACA training file. This is where you log and track everything and it ties together your whole ACA qualification because it is more than just the exams. So check out this video that explains a lot more about that. So the training file will be very new to you at the start, but it is something that you need to be on top of. So to wrap up the ACA certificate level, Although the exams are predominantly multiple choice, they are not easy and they definitely should not be underestimated. So they're not impossible, but they can be quite tricky. And for that reason, the pass rates aren't 100%. But if you do put in the work, you should definitely be on track to pass and do well in these exams. I passed first time, a lot of others in my cohort did, if not the majority. But what I did find is that if you do unfortunately slip up in the certificate level, it does sometimes tend to follow you into the later exams. So do really, really try to put in the work now because it should benefit you. Remember, just do a lot of question practice and just take it day by day. Plan ahead and just have confidence. You really should be able to pass these. But do not as well be disheartened if you don't pass first time. You could potentially just be really unlucky on the day and it has happened to the best of us. And there's so many success stories where people have actually failed and then they do still go on to pass and qualify. And it doesn't really actually knock them too much at all. I was honestly as well just convinced I failed so many of these, especially management information. I really did think I failed that certificate level exam. So if you are in the position where you're convinced you failed, do check this video out and it should hopefully help you and give you some reassurance that you might need. So good luck with your ACA certificate level. I'm so glad you were able to watch this video and allow me to kind of help you through this. So if you did find it helpful, then do give me a like and any questions, any questions at all, just do drop them below and I'll be happy to respond to those. And I will be coming back every single week with more videos. So make sure you do subscribe and I hopefully will see you again soon. Thanks.